it's Jenny from Jenny Stitching Simply here on FlossTube and on Instagram. And it has been a while. It feels like Christmas was yesterday, but it's actually February 2nd when I'm recording this video. So thank you all for your patience with me. I feel like it's been one thing after another since Christmas. Luckily, Christmas was lovely. And then after that, Roman and I both got really sick. So I said to Roman, I, I am making a video today. Um, the longer I wait, the harder it's going to be. And thank you everyone for checking on me. And I have to be honest, I got, I posted my video on my last video on Christmas Eve and then we got so sick so fast I didn't even get to go through the comments from the last video so I'm still looking forward to doing that and thank you for being here with me so this is a channel about cross stitch and welcome to everyone that is new to the channel and thank you for everyone who has come back I am going to start with my finished projects and the most monumental I would say is that I did finish the Modern Folk Embroidery Fruits of Plenty 2021 Stitch Along. I was so determined no matter how horrible I felt that I was going to get this finished. I'm just making sure that I'm showing you the front. So it's the last time, well maybe one more time if I figure out how to fully finish it, that you will have to see me show this to you, but it is done. So I just go up. So I'm really excited about this naturally more. I love the piece. Um, I absolutely love the piece. The boys love the piece. They love that it has a T for Tristan and an R for Roman and it has the pagoda. And I had talked about that in one of my previous videos. We do have a pagoda here in Berks County. So to them, it's like our pagoda, the pagoda. Anyway, I'm just so happy that it's, that I'm done. It was actually, I thought that when I was finishing it and putting the last few stitches in, that I'd be saying, Roman, grab a camera. You know, this is so exciting. I'm putting the last few stitches in. But it was actually kind of sad. Like it was, you know, it was, it was really enjoyable. So I, I, I know I need to put it in a frame to keep it safe. It makes me sad because I like touching it. I like the the weight of it and, and how thick it became because I did stitch this two over two, even though it's on 36 count. And I used DMC 924 and DMC 939. So 924 is my all-time favorite DMC color. And these are, I mentioned a few videos ago that I had found that watercolor paper in the attic and I had cut two by two squares to use as thread drops. And then I realized that even, I think these are one and a half by two now, they're even easier to manage as far as how much space they take up. And then the watercolor, just because I wanted to play with watercolors and I had, you know, empty watercolor paper near me. So anyway, um, and then I just, I tied it with a piece of lace that I had. I've just, you know, it's finding things that have been sitting around. I also am finding that I like the, uh, how little space this takes up as opposed to a ring that's rigid. 
So those are the colors that I used. And although I have a few more finishes, I want to show a work in progress while I have this out. So I, I was going through my list of charts that I have because I wanted to start something else that was on the larger side after I finished Fruits of Plenty. And in my PDF folder, I had the Long Dog Samplers Quakers Dozen. And I downloaded this, I think in April of 2020. So it would have been before um, the Stitch Along had come out. And I think this chart came out, I want to say it was 2014. I could be totally wrong. Um, but it's 226 by 300. So not gigantic. I don't see a date. I don't know why I thought it was 2014, something like that. It came out a while ago. Anyway, so I had this beautiful fabric from my friend Eileen, and this is Picture This Plus Pewter. And it is, it's a very light um, bluish gray with a little bit of kind of green almost modeling to it. So I decided to start in the top left like I normally do. This is 32 count and that's what I've done so far. So I'm working away on this. It has a little bit more color to the fabric than what's showing. You can kind of see some of the modeling there. And the modeling is very similar in tone to, to this color. So I'm working on it and Roman's like, oh, wait, are you doing that other one again? And I thought, oh my gosh, no, does it look like the same thing? And he said, well, it's the same color. And I said, no, it's not. It is completely different color. So I had chosen Cosmo, well, I chose, at first I had two colors chosen, DMC 413 and Cosmo 983. And again, I was just going through pieces, you know, colors that I had here, and I had the Cosmo for the Jean Farish Hearts Come Home at Christmas chart that I had shown a few videos ago. I thought, oh, this is such a beautiful color. I'm so excited and it looks so good with the fabric and and Rem, you know, made the comment about it being the same color and I said, no. And then <laughs> it's pretty similar. It is pretty similar. So yeah, I really like that color. Um, that's okay though. It's totally fine because I think they're gonna look beautiful next to each other and maybe that will work then you know one of the boys can have one and one can have the other so I started adding um, this is the DMC 413 and then the Cosmo that looks pretty similar to 924 and then I started adding some silks that I had left over from other projects. This is Gloriana Arctic Ice, and then this is Almond m and Slate Gray. Um, so I don't have a particular plan. I just am like, this was the Cosmo and the DMC, and then I kept using the DMC 413 and then I started using the Gloriana in these flowers because it has a little tiny tiny bit of variegation to it. So I'm really excited about this. Um, I think <laughs> that, I mean it's not wait let me get on the top. It's I mean it's obviously not the same at all but it, it I can see where when he glanced at it 
he thought that I was, I don't know, making a, a second copy of this one or something. Um, but I think they're going to look awesome near each other. So, yeah, I, oh, I stopped talking about the frame. I, you know, I'm, I'm torn. I, I want it in a frame to be safe. We're going to be, you know, not in this house for much longer before we move out west. So there's part of me that feels like, you know, do I really want to put all these things up? But I would really like, especially after starting this one and seeing how lovely they would look, you know, together, um, starting kind of like a blue wall since I enjoy my blues so much. And I was seriously considering taking the wall color, like the white wall color, because you, you know, there's a million whites. And when I finally chose a white for the walls and I really like it, um, almost doing the frame it in well, literally in the same paint as the wall so that you still just see the, the stitching because I don't even know what, what frame I would put it in really. So that's not a finish, but that whip or that work in progress, I think definitely works with that finish and I'm really excited about it. And um, the other thing I really enjoy, which we all know from, from her pieces, but you know, I love the charts. Oh, the other thing I should say is I'm not going, I'm going to change the, this says wrought for pleasure, given in love. I'm going to change that, but there's things I didn't notice until I started stitching it. Like this little section, there's little butterflies. They're really cute. So, and there's 12. So if I did do one a month, I could definitely get it done this year, but um, even that, that was not that much stitching time and I got more than one finished. So that was that one. And then let's see. Um, I finished my gift to be by the Scarlet House. I love this chart and this my sweet friend Eileen had lent to me so I was highly motivated to finish this because I really like getting things back to people so um, I did this one one 40 counts weeks gray it's not I didn't press it yet and if you notice, it is not the same as the picture because I started, I started the house too high. So it should have been, the roof line should have been started like lower on this tree. And by that time I had like everything, I think including the wreath done and at all, all of it done. It was just the house. And I, was, I thought, no, it's just going to be a taller house. And then when I do the, when I fully finish it, I might use some of this negative space to put um, greenery or something in. But I just love, I love how it turned out. I really don't enjoy doing a lot of solid stitching like that. It was funny. This was one where I pretty much had it done I don't know, the week before the month ended. And I literally needed like four rows of stitching in the bottom of the house and a tiny bit of snow. And I don't, for whatever reason, I just kept putting it off. I mean, it was, so it's finally done. And I, oh, this reminds me too. I don't, I haven't mentioned, I, so I started putting, sorry, really tiny handwriting. I don't think it'll focus. I, when I did the Blackbird, um, I don't remember what the small was called. It was from the Winds of Autumn book. Anyway, long story short, 
on my fabric there was a pink mark and I couldn't figure out what it could have possibly come from because I use the same blue highlighter. I don't have anything pink. I don't have any pink fabric. Um, but there was this kind of, I mean, it was fairly large. I covered it. Um, luckily it got covered by the stitching. And the only thing I could think of was I would always leave the pretty um, tags on that were pinned on that had the the count and the name from the shop that I got it from. So I took those off one day and just put like a little label um, in pencil on the very, very edge. And it's the only thing I could think of that pink would have come from. So that is that. And then I just used, it calls for classic color works. Um, and I just used things that I had on hand already. So I used Weeks Dye Work. Well, this is not, it's hard to see when it's in front of my face. This is Weeks Dye Works Chestnut, DMC 355, DMC 950. Weeks Dye Works Bullfrog. I love this color for trees. It has such a nice variegation that, I don't know, it just works so well. I, these, a lot of, the Bullfrog and the Gold were left over from Feliz Navidad. And then Weeks Dye Works Onyx. And I think I just used DMC B5200 for the snow. So those were the colors. They were really pretty. This also really made me realize how much Onyx has kind of almost greens in the in the variegation. So that made me like Onyx a lot more too. And oh, the other thing I wanted to mention about this chart, there is like her face is one over one. And then all of the curves in the cape, and I believe in her dress, instead of using fractional stitches, they are one over one. Oh yeah, and like it, every everything that curves like in the top. So they are charted as one over one, but that's the only place in the chart is her her clothes. And then the other finish that I had, which I'll explain what it's on here. Um, this is the Jeanette Douglas mini bouquet stitch along that she's doing for the year. And she has it on the home page of her website. There is the border and then this was January, the pineapple, and then February came out yesterday. So I'm super excited to do February. And I just couldn't help. It's just so cute and little, and you can do it all together as one chart, and it has the, the borders, like I said, or you can just do it as a little pin cushion. And it is charted with a border around the design, but I just wanted it to be really small. And when I was stitching the border, I didn't, it didn't show up super well on, this is um, 36 count Shrekies tan by Needle Bling Designs. It's the first time I've used this fabric and I really liked it. So I just did a little pin pillow and then finished it with the wool on the back and the um, blue topaz little tiny stones I just put on there and then pins it on this bag. So the colors, she has the, obviously the charted colors, the DMC conversion. I just looked at it and took colors that I had already. Um, and then again, I just, I put it on this little lace holder and I'm just going to keep them together as the series 
progresses to see if I can, um, you know, have them as overlap. So there's Weeks Dye Works Saffron, Weeks Dye Works Squash, and Marigold. There is a lot of yellows in it, so you could just use something more variegated probably if you didn't want to switch colors as much. Gentle Arts Harvest Moon, Weeks Dye Works Chickpea, Weeks Dye Works Palomino. Yeah, there were kind of surprisingly a lot of colors. Gentle Arts Avocado, Gentle Arts Baby Spinach, Weeks Dye Works Teal Frost, Weeks Dye Works, oh, I didn't use both of these. I've got Blackboard and Gunmetal here. And I think I used Blackboard is what I ended up using. So I'll keep these like this and then see how the rest of the months, um, like what colors they call for. So, and then the only other thing that I finished was I did the Let It Snow chart from Priscilla and Chelsea Stitching with the Housewives for Tristan, just as like a, just because I put it in a package with some things for him. And it has the cute, kind of has like a big horizontal house which reminds me of where he lived like his apartments <laughs> and then this gigantic snowman and it just says let it snow and i just i did it on black with colors that i had and a, a white chenille from lady dot that is called snow so i just sent that to him i didn't tell him it was coming i just sent it but i'm sure his roommates just love the cross stitch that that i keep sending but no, Tristan really appreciated it. So I said, it's not a Christmas ornament. It's a winter decoration. So, so I don't know how I could forget my winter cross stitch camp project. Uh, this is the cross stitch camp that Sherry from Colorado Cross Stitcher, she did a summer one that was really fun. It was June, July, and August. And then she is doing one for the month of February. So for February's cross stitch camp, the parameters were to choose a design that was, that you were going to stitch in just one color. So I, again, went through my, that Google sheet of charts that I had put out a few videos ago as a link, you know, you can click on it and see how I organize my charts. And there was one that, I, I mean, realistically, I don't think I'm going to get it done in February, but I've been wanting to do it for a long time. And I just think it's a perfect February chart. And I was planning on stitching it in one color. And so I thought, well, you know what? I'll start it for winter cross stitch camp and we'll just see what happens. Who knows? Maybe I'll get it done. So if you... Well, if you want to participate, if you go to Sherry's um, Floss Tube Colorado Cross Stitcher, you can still start this anytime in February. Um, she has all the details and what, what tags to put on Instagram. Now, excuse our printer. We have this laser printer that's like completely acting up. But so this is the chart printed in black and white with these horrible lines going through it. And it's... It's actually stitched in red on um, like a raw colored linen. And I thought, well, what if I kind of do the opposite and do, I'm doing Aztec red with Weeks Dye Works Onyx. So that's my little start from yesterday. That's the top left corner. Um, just a tiny bit of that section there. So I just wanted to try and make sure that I was happy with the color. And I am, I like it a lot. So it's, I like too that the, you can read the verse. It's not like you can't figure it out. 
it's not super obvious, um, which I like. It is, so Jacob has a nice explanation as he, as he typically does. He found this verse from an old English poem by Nicholas Breton. Um, who lived 1558 to 1626. And it says, foolish love is only folly. Wanton love is too unholy. Greedy love is covetous. Idle love is frivolous. But the gracious love it is that doth prove the work of it. And gracious love is the name of the chart, which I failed to mention. So he says that the lettering was borrowed from an antique sampler in the v &A collection whilst the edge motifs were inspired by traditional patterns from the Andes. Inspiration for the turtle doves came from Byzantine paintings, making this a rather eclectic pattern. So you can see, I mean, I love, you know, I love Avlia and I love things with decorative patterns. And last, I think it was last video, it might've been two videos ago, I showed the Portuguese sampler that Eileen had given me from Kathy Barrick with also that kind of decorative um, pattern to it. So I fell in love with the chart and then when I read that, I was like, okay, that makes sense. That's why, that's why I really like it. And I would still like to do the cute little cross stitch patches um, that Sherry has as free charts. I have an obsession with patches. Um, whenever we go to national parks, which I absolutely love, um, and that would be one of my wishes is to go to every national park. But I have the passport, like uh, Jan Hicks often talks about it too. And I, I'm like, I totally get it. I feel the same way. I have, you know, it's like the national park passport book. Um, and it also includes national historical sites and we, I will go everywhere to get my stamp from the different places, but I also get the patches and the stickers. And I, I had been collecting the patches for years, not really knowing what to do with them because I thought, well, if I, if I sew them onto like my hiking backpack, then it's not really waterproof anymore and like the warranty won't be good anyway silly but um so i when i got my jeep i put them my husband said oh you know you can put them on the headliner of your jeep like rally patches and i said what like is that a thing and he said yeah like people put rally patches on the headliner so now like the front of the jeep has all the patches of all the different places that we've been to so i know some might think that that's not a good idea but i i really like it it makes me happy so and then when people see it they'll say oh you need to cover the whole thing in patches and i'm like i know i just need to go more like i can't get the patch if i haven't actually been to the place so i just have to like keep traveling so um oh patches yeah from cross stitch camp that's how i got on the anyway okay so Back to this situation. So I wanted to do the Better Together quilt along that happened, I think it was like maybe last spring. And when I was visiting my family in Utah over the summer and we went to the quilt shop, I had mentioned that I picked up fabric for this quilt and the quilt is just half square triangles and it's like um, a solid and then I, for I forget how like a dozen fat quarter bundles or something like that 15 I don't know I don't remember but I just couldn't decide what to do and I don't have a stash of fabric I just have fabric for like a specific project so I thought well, this is fun because I'm with my mom and my brother and it's, you know, we're going to these awesome quilt shops. So this is probably the best time to do it. So I never actually showed you guys the fabric that I got. So everything is kind of, just do this. They're all fat quarters. 
they all have either like Southwestern. My mom loved this. She, my mom was like, you can't not get the bison one. You gotta get the bison one. We saw lots of bison when we had gone to Yellowstone one year. Um, and they say like adventure awaits, you know, things like that. Um, so I have enough to, I can finally start the quilt. These are all words about like people, like camping and traveling and things like that. So I have the stuff now and I really wanted to start, but I thought, well, I don't want to start. I haven't, I don't think I've done a half square triangle before. Like I understand the concept, but I hadn't actually done it. So I thought, well, let me see what I have before I start cutting these up, just to make sure that I know what I'm doing. And I had this, it was like this super inexpensive five inch, whatever, I don't know what a five inch pre-cut pack is called, but one of those from Joanne Fabrics, from my days of having to drive to Philly for travel across for Roman, and then having like three hours to kill and walking around Joanne Fabrics. And it was one of those that was like on clearance for $3 and then it was on sale on top of that. And I thought, oh, the fabric's really pretty. I mean, it's really not, it's very like crunchy fabric, but they were five inch. That's not what, what the quilt calls for. But anyway, I, I thought, let me just, like I've had this sitting here for several years now. So let me just use this to practice on. So, and I, a lot of people have said to me, well, you know, if you want to try something before you do a quilt, you know, why don't you do a table runner or something small like that? And I think the reason I never do that is because like, I just, I don't know, we don't put a table runner on the table. So this, I thought, well, I'll make, I'll make some kind of project bag. And it just so happened, I mean, I got the fabric because, you know, I like the blues and then Oh, I already put it away. But when I laid down that Quaker's Dozen fabric, the colors were just like, like the bag. <laughs> and then when I laid down this piece, just to lay it down to put it away, because I was like done for the night, um, it was like the colors were perfect. So it was all just a happy accident. And this is so not perfect. Um, I think... I don't know, there might be like one, like one or two corners that meet up. And then I didn't know that you were supposed to quilt like on either side of the actual seam. Sorry, there's so much like pet hair on this. I didn't know that. So I just did it on one side and luckily the, the pattern is very forgiving. So it's not quite as noticeable. And then I, totally butchered. I had tried to do the zipper tabs and completely messed that up. And then I did a flange and then the top were, it was just the leftover pieces of fabric in smaller half square triangles. And the size is a hundred percent. I don't know if I already said this, just based on what I like how much fabric I had. Like it just had to be three by three squares, you know? And then it just ha so happened that this worked out to be exactly, I think it was like 12 inches by 12 inches. I added this strip to the top, which was like one and a half inches maybe. And then I completely lost all common sense. Like I know how, how to do a lining in a bag. For some reason I thought like, because this was quilted, I wouldn't do it the same way. I don't know why I would think that it, you wouldn't do it exactly the same way, but anyway, so that was kind of practicing. And then the other, oh, I had enough fabric to do a little pouch. So again, not really perfect at all, but I got to practice and it was just the leftover pieces. So it was just like, however it turned out, it turned out. And then in here, I just keep my extra floss for that project. So I was, and then this one, I actually did do the lining. You know, I always like to do that plain, um, not stitching linen, but like dressmaker type linen on the inside. 
and so that was fun. I still have like a couple squares left that I thought, well, maybe I'll use um, Celeste from Celeste Creates had done that tutorial on the, um, like those cute little tags that she makes to put on her thread drops to put her needles. I thought I have like two more pieces. I've got to use them up. Um, but that felt good because that was like just sitting there. And then I had gotten this fabric also at the same quilt shop in their orphan. They had like an orphan section of fat quarters. So I thought, well, let me try this because this, and then this is just a plain Kona, but I thought this is much less forgiving because there's so much contrast. So there's a couple places where they lined up. So <laughs> it's so true when they say that like that never gets old when you open the seam and the points line up, like it'll never get old. So I have the same configuration and I'll make this into a bag too. I, you know, I don't typically purchase bags. I, you know, I like those, um, I don't have any out here with me, but those plain produce bags, but I thought this was a really good way to practice and use the stuff that I already had. And, you know, it just ended up being the size that it is based on how much fabric I had. Um, but I am, I had, I had fun trying it. So that was my sewing projects. So my brother and my mom did the sweetest thing. My brother had texted me, um, this is my brother Brent and Preeti and said, you know, I know your birthday is not till February, but January is such a blah month. You know, I'm going to be like you're going to be receiving little things like throughout January. So it was so, it was just so much fun. Every couple of days, something would show up from Etsy or, um, and I wanted to share with you what, what was sent. And I apologize guys, if I forgot something, cause there were so many fun things. I'm afraid that I might've like started using something and then forgotten to bring it, but I don't remember the order in which they came, um, but I think the first were these adorable rooster scissors. And you guys know I only have, I have two pairs of scissors. I have my ones that I use, you know, every day on my little tray and then my travel ones. And then I also got these little bunny scissors. So now I think what I'm going to do is put one with my sewing machine because I hate using my like big fabric scissors just to snip the little threads and then I'll put one in my car so that I always have like usually I have to make sure I remember to like have my scissors and things when I leave. So they both came separately and then Brent sent this beautiful, it's, I'm, oh my goodness, it's like a little bird, a handmade bird, it's clay. And it has, like it's a top bottom hole. So I haven't decided what I wanna make it into yet, but it's super cool and I really like it. And then, and you guys know I don't really have needle minders. I feel like Brent bought all the things that I wouldn't buy for myself, which is really fun. Um, <laughs> when you get things like that, that you wouldn't get for yourself. Um, this is from Mad for Minders, which I know everyone loves. And it's this amazing squirrel. And I do love squirrels. I think I've mentioned before, I used to want to have a pet squirrel or a chipmunk. And my mom said no, because chipmunks, I guess, can like chew through concrete. So you don't really want them to bite you. Um, and then Brent also sent me knitting needles which I have no idea how to knit at all. I don't know how to crochet. I would like to very much. Um, people have shown me and as you all know, I'm left-handed and so it just never quite, never stuck. Like I could just never wrap my head around it. And Brent has started knitting and Preeti started knitting 
and they are doing such beautiful things and there's all these amazing shops out where they live where they're you know they just get like the really really super special fibers to knit with and everything so he said you know i sent you a pair of knitting needles in case you want to to learn how to knit with me and of course i do i just i don't know how to do it yet but roman also it's so strange he always asks me if i will learn how to crochet and i have no idea where that comes from like why would he want me to know how to crochet but so anyway i just need to find some left-handed um tutorials on youtube i mean I'm, there has to be and maybe it's just me maybe it doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed and when i was shown it just didn't it, i just couldn't understand it so um but i i would really like to do that um and then my mom and brent said oh we're going to shepherd's bush and i was like oh i'm so happy for you that's great no but they got me my mom got me presents so it was really sweet um and she was jokingly, well, she had asked if there was something I wanted. And I said, can you just like take a picture of everything in the store? And then, but when I'm at Shepherd's Bush, I always like to get the Shepherd's Bush kits because, you know, you're at Shepherd's Bush. So um, this one, I, oh, I didn't take it out of the plastic. This is to all a good night and it has everything you need which i love i i have to say i have realized that if something is kitted up i am it's I'm, it's i don't know i don't like kidding stuff up i know people really really enjoy that i and i really wish i was one of those people but when something's kitted up like this i just find it so easy to pick up and just do it like when eileen had let me borrow that um brenda Ver Brenda Gervais chart that I showed in the, I think the last video that was so cute. And she said, oh yeah, you know, everything's in there except the fabric. Like, just go ahead. I'm not going to stitch it right now. But um, the fact that like all the flosses were in there and I didn't have to go look for them or anything. And I just had to pull out a piece of, of summer khaki that I had. I just, man, I got, I just, I started that thing like so fast so i have done their kits before and i love them and then the other one she sent me was um i'm going to take this out so you can see it better and i actually really like that they use the the um photographs i think it's really i think it's very sweet so this says simple joys and again it comes with everything it's got the rickrack and it's fun like it looks like some of these are definitely gloriana some are dmc i mean they tell you all the colors but and then there's like a little heart button so i am a big fan of the of the kits i have actually thought to myself too that if i i almost wonder if i were so on top of it that I could do that where, you know, I would like have the fabric, the fibers, um, the fabric I was going to use for finishing, you know, and really just had it like everything was, was ready to go. And then my mom and Brent called me and said, Oh, we're going to, um, um what's it called? Pine needle. Is it pine needle in Gardner's village? Yeah. And then the, the cross-stitch publications are called Pine Mountain, I think is, is the way it is. But they said, oh, you know, we're going to Gardner's Village. And I was like, oh, I'm so, I'm so happy for you. Yeah, no. Um, and my mom had asked if there was anything that I wanted her to pick up for me. And I actually, on, my, on that Google spreadsheet, I have a wish list. And I did have something from well i mean obviously they carry other people too but the december snapshot that sandra um designed the i think they're all cute i wouldn't do the whole series but the the december um i just i just think it's such a sweet 
classic Christmas with the stockings and the fireplace. And I love, I was always fascinated by these little photograph tabs. I just always enjoyed them. I still, I have, I remember I used to have the ones you had to like lick, like a stamp. And then now I have sheets of ones that are um, self-adhesive. But looking at like old family photographs, you know, they would be in the book with those. So I just thought, always thought they were cool. So she picked up this for me. Well, sorry, waving it around. And then Brent is so sweet. He grabbed, um, They, that, the chart does not, you don't need any buttons for the chart, but he grabbed the, it'll be hard to see, the little wreath button and like a little blackbird and they, they were in this cute little bag. So that was really fun um, to get these um, unexpected little presents. And, the, and you know what? He... He was so, he, it really was so spot on. Cause it, yeah, I mean, January is such a blah month and like we were sick and it was just kind of miserable. And so that really was, was fun to get that. And then uh, Tristan turns 20 in a few weeks. So that's crazy, but he's so happy. I miss him so much, but he's so happy. So I, you know, I can't complain. That's all that you hope for. Um, he went to Jackson Hole with a friend and their family for like four days. He said it was like a dream. He loved it so much. And um, I asked if, you know, if, if he was sad to go back to work. And he said, no, I love work. I wake up every morning and I'm excited about work. Like my commute is a 20 minute ski, um, I don't know what you call it, ski ride? I don't ski. You know, like he skis 20 minutes <laughs> to get to his side of the mountain <laughs> and then 20 minutes home and that's his commute. So um, he just loves it. So, I mean, what more could you ask for? But, and then my, my birthday is at the end of February and is my mom's birthday too. So, um, I know exactly what I'm sending, although I'm just not as on top of it as my mom and Brent are. So thank you guys for, for doing that. It was super fun. And I will, I mean, I'm sure I'll get it done before our actual birthday, but I'm just not, I'm not as good as they are. So, so that was fun. And I want to, oh, speaking of kidding things up. So for Christmas, I had gotten a gift card to Joann's and I thought, you know, I wonder if I go through my list of charts that I have, how many things, because I, I said, like I said, I really don't like kitting things up. So I tend, I tend to not keep, kit things up. You know, I just keep my fabric in the one basket, like I've shown you guys in the, um, like the organizing video. And I keep my DMC organized by color and the charts are, most of them are on my thumb drive because they're PDFs. And I thought, okay, well with this gift card, I wonder how many charts could I kit up with fabric that I have on hand and then DMC from Joann's. So I looked through what I really wanted to stitch and what either called for DMC or I would be happy with using DMC because I really do. I mean, DMC is my favorite out of everything, um, but certainly there's things that I appreciate having the variegation in as called for. Um, so I did that. I'm not going to go through all that. I think it'll be too long, but that was really helpful. Um, I mean, I can still take things apart, but what I found was I was very grateful that of the things that I already own, I was able to kit up a lot of things. Um, like Evlia always calls for DMC. I have a lot of Evlia charts that I want to stitch. So with that, that gift card, it was awesome. Um, and then there were a few when I really thought like, okay, is this something that 
I would want to invest in the floss or the fabric for, you know, do I like it that much? I thought, no, I like it, but I, no, I'm not going to kit it up. Um, and then it was fun to kind of like take the fabrics that I had and match them up and see how far I could get with what I had on hands and then just matching everything up. So that was really enjoyable. And um, yeah, so maybe, maybe next video I will share some of those. And then the other thing that I realized was I had wanted to do a finish parade of everything that I did in 2021 and it just never happened. And I had made, you know, a list and gotten all the dates out of my, my book and pulled everything together. I didn't pull things off the walls because some of the stuff is like stuck on there were so many command strips and everything like that's not going to happen. But I thought, no, I'll just show things as a previous finish. Like a lot of people do like during the time frame in which they were done last year instead of doing a whole separate video. So that's my plan for that. So I need to do the giveaway winners from last time. Thank you for my patience. Thank you for my patience. Thank you for your patience with me. Um, I'll get them out as soon as I hear, I hear from you. So um, before that, I did forget something that Brent sent me. And there are these awesome stickers from Teresa Kogut that have all these beautiful pieces on them. That's another artist that I have on my list that I haven't stitched or I don't have any charts from yet, but I love, there's some of them that are just, I absolutely would love to do. So that's super fun. I had put them in my book and then when I was just grabbing stuff, I thought I knew there was something else. There's probably something else too. It was, it was just so, I mean, it was over the top, but thank you, Brenny. So for the, the charts from the last video, the first one was Feliz Navidad, and you had to use the word heart in your comments. And that is going to K Scruggs. I wrote it down this time, just in case there were any editing issues and I just had to piece together the video from my phone. I've got names. And then the second one is the first snowfall, and that is Verapy R. So there's the spelling. So thank you so much, guys. Congratulations. Um, I, like I said, I'll get them out as soon as I get your info. If you just email me with the email that's in the bottom of the description of this video, and just let me know where you would like me to send it. I will get it right out to you. And then, like I mentioned, I was going through things that I wanted to kit up. And I found a few more charts to share that. Um, I have two from Leela Studio, which I love. And I, I actually stitched this one as a gift. So this is called... Oh, grow a garden. Um, there's no writing on it. Her charts are really nice. It's on a nice cardstock, and then the chart is really clear and easy to read. Um, I have my thread conversions on a post-it, but that came off. So if you're interested in stitching this one, if you just use the word garden in your comment, maybe tell me how to get a garden to actually grow, because I kill everything. Everyone gives me plants. It's like a running joke. I've probably mentioned this before. Like everyone will give me plants and say, these are impossible to kill. Like you can't kill this plant. And then two weeks later, my plant is dead. I just, my mom is just an incredible gardener and can grow anything. And I can't get like a simple house plant to live. So the other one is called Dinah's Garden Strawberry. It's super cute. It has the strawberries. Um, both, you know, I think come February, 
I'm already hoping for spring. I mean, in Pennsylvania, we still, I mean, we can still get snow in March, but I do want spring to be here now. So these are both very springy, summery, happy charts. So if this is something that you would like to stitch, if you would just use the word strawberry, and then the 18, over 18, and be able to provide me with a mailing address. Oh, I'm happy to ship anywhere. Um, if it's something that I can't, I'll let you know, but it's, it's open to anyone and don't use the word giveaway or things like that. Um, all the usual things. And I think that's everything. I'm sure I'll, for, as soon as I stop recording, I'll think of something, but thank you again so much for being here. And if you enjoyed the video, um, please consider subscribing. Um, and I will, I'm going to be more consistent. I can do this. It's a new year. You know, it's so, cause at the last video I was talking about how excited I am for the new year and the, and the just fresh start. And then I feel like this happens every year where something happens the month of January, like Roman gets like a traumatic head injury snowboarding or like something happens where the whole month of January just disappears. And luckily everyone's okay and I'm not complaining, but the whole month of January is gone. And then like, we're ready to go in February. So I haven't lost hope, but you know, I just, I'm still waiting for that January 1st. We like turn over a new, a new leaf, but I will get more consistent. And I don't really have plans. Um, besides the cross stitch camp and I want to do the next little mini bouquet and whatever else happens. And in the next video, I will share some of those things from my chart list that I kitted up. So anyway, thank you guys so much. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.